Silence fills the empty grave now that I have gone. But my mind is not at rest, for questions linger on. I will ask, and you will answer. Covenant Holy City of High Charity, 17 hours after exfiltration of UNSC personnel. Current condition? Overrun by the flood. UNSC A.I. Cortana, believed captured by the grave mind. In the time it takes me to tell you my name, I can perform five billion simultaneous operations. A heartbeat for you, an eternity for me. I need you to understand that, so you realize this isn't going to be as easy as it looks for either of us. Now I know you're taking this contagion to Earth, but I also know how to stop you and all your parasitic buddies. I've just got to stall you until I can do something about it. So, my name's Cortana, UNSC AI serial number CTN0452-9, and that's all I'm going to tell you for the time being. You got questions? So have I. All right, shoot. This is Halo, Human Weakness, by Karen Travis, narrated by me, Miss Precursor. All rights to the Halo Evolution short story compilation and Halo Human Weakness belong to the prospective authors and publishers. This is a not-for-profit creative endeavor done by a Halo fan for Halo fans. I hope you enjoy. Mainframe Control Room, High Charity. It was damned ugly. That was still Cortana's first thought about the grave mind, and the reaction intrigued her when she paused to examine it. When she put up her hand to block the grave mind's exploring tentacle, revulsion kicked in even before prudent self defense. Why? I mean, why have I judged it? It's not human. Aesthetics don't apply here. And it's not the first time I've seen it. It just looks different now. It might have been the effect of observing the grave mind via Hyde Charity's computer system. Viewed through the neural interface of Master Chief's armor, it hadn't seemed quite the same. Perhaps it was the narrower focus. In High Charity, she now had many more eyes to scrutinize the creature from a variety of angles. Security cameras scattered around the station gave Cortana enough images to pull together a composite view of the grave mind. Fast, misshapen, multi-mouthed, all tendrils and dark cavities. Was it slimy? No. On closer inspection, there was no mucus layer visible, and there were no moisture readings from any of the environmental sensors accessible to her throughout the orbital station. It just seemed that it should have been slimy, and there was no rational reason to feel disgusted by that, just a primal memory she'd been given, along with all the other trappings of humanity. Humans are instinctively repelled by slime, and they still don't know exactly why. I don't like not knowing things. It didn't matter. This blob wasn't going to get a date anytime soon. The grave mind's voice sent up faint vibrations throughout the deck. I am more than you will know, and more than you will... You always talk in rhyme, Cortana asked, hands on hips. Nothing personal, but you're no Keats. Don't give up the day job. It, he, 
had a rasping baritone voice, detectable throughout the control room's audio sensors. The creature was so unlike anything she'd encountered before that she was fascinated for a few moments by the sheer scale of it. She couldn't see where it ended. It was. It had. It had no boundaries. That was the strangest thing. When she interfaced with the warship's systems, she could feel its limits, its dimensions, its physical reality, all the stresses in its structure, and the time to failure of its components. Sensors told her every detail. A ship was knowable. So was a human being up to a point. Downloaded to Master Chief's armor, she could monitor all his vital signs. And she knew him. She knew him in all the ways the people who lived in close quarters knew one another's foibles and moods. She knew where he ended and where she began. She felt that line between herself and a ship, too. But this grave mind, measurable and detectable, felt different, blurred. How did she know that? What was she detecting, and how? There were no complex tasks to occupy her, no ship to control, no interaction with other AIs, no tactical data, and perhaps the most distracting absence of all, no Master Chief, John, to take care of. High Charity systems were gradually failing, the remaining environment controls and sensors occupied a tiny fraction of her consciousness. It was like rattling around in a big, dumb, empty truck. She had to stay busy. If she didn't, this thing would take her apart. There is much more complexity to meet her than the simple, plodding rhymes of this Keats, the Gravevine said. He sounded more wearied than offended by the jibe. But then I have the memories of many poets, far beyond your limited human culture. And I have the quickness of intellect to compose all manner of poetic forms as I speak, rather than labor over mere words for days. His tone softened, but not in a kind way. I would have thought an entity like yourself, with such rapid thought processes and so vast a mind, would understand that. Perhaps not. Perhaps you are more limited than I imagined. But then, you were made by humans, were you not? I shall speak more simply for you then. You patronizing lump of fungus. I ought to teach you a lesson, buddy. But later. Ah, how kind of you. I'll do my best to keep up then. Cortana shared the pain of downtime and idle processes, panicky and urgent as struggling for air. She could think of better ways to use her spare processing speed than poetry, though. I still think I'd get pretty tired of waiting for you to find a word that rhymes with orange. The grave mind now filled her field of vision. She found herself searching for eyes to focus on. Another irrational reflex, but still saw only a rip of a mouth. His voice teetered on the lower limit of audible human frequencies. Orange. In what language? I have absorbed so many. Ah, wit as well as looks, how can a girl resist? The grave mind made a sound like the start of an avalanche, an infrasonic rumbling. I have pity within me, he said, and infinite time. But I also have impatience, because I am all things. You will tell me everything about Earth's defenses. You'll need to be more specific, then. Cortana suddenly felt as if she'd been nudged by a careless shoulder in a crowd, but couldn't identify the source. 
It wasn't tactile. Nothing had impacted the station's hull, as far as she could tell. It's a pretty big file. I can see that. The comment caught her off guard. The grave mind could play trivial games then. Did he think she would fall for that? She doubted it. When she focused on him, there was still that sense of his being multiple, diffuse everywhere in the station. I could be projecting, of course. He absorbed the memories of all the Flood's victims. Obvious, really obvious. No, it's the tentacles. He's probably extending them over a wider area than the systems can display, and I'm sensing the electrical impulses in those muscles. Aren't I? There's a rational explanation for this. She had to work it out. She had to find a way of sending a warning to command and then keeping the grave mind at bay until John returned for her. And that would be a long time, by an AI standard. He would return, of course. He'd promised. Ask me one on art and culture, she said, seeing as you like poetry so much. Is that also gamma encrypted? No matter. I shall see for myself. Another fleeting nudge against Cortana's shoulder suddenly turned into a slap across the face. It was shocking. Disorienting. She had no idea how the grave mind had done it. She'd had no warning, not knowing, and not anticipating that hurt. That was pain. Pain warned an organic animal of physical damage. Whatever the grave mind had done to her had set off that damage alert in her own systems. I'm going to be a tougher stick to chew than you've been used to. She realized she'd taken up a defiant posture, fists balled at her sides. A smack in the mouth doesn't scare me. No, what scares me is how you managed it. This was going to be a fight. Not an interrogation. A struggle to see who could extract the data they needed first. She had to work out how to swing a punch back at him. John, his gravelly voice said, slowly. John, so... That's what you call him. Most touching. It was the use of John's name that made Cortana feel suddenly violated. And it was more than realizing that the grave mine had breached the mainframe. Not just the metal and boards and composites, but the software processes themselves. It was about the invasion of something personal and precious. Somehow, the creature had interfaced with the system. It was in here with her. But to know the name John, no, it was within her. The system was her temporary body, real and vulnerable, not like the blue-lit hologram she thought of as herself. She was sharing her physical existence with another entity. Now she knew how John felt. But her interface with the Spartan was there to keep him alive. It was benign. She was there to save John, and it was more than duty or blind programming. It was because she cared. The grave mind, though, didn't care about her at all. He was in here to break her.